in this section, we're going to look at this sort of idea of islands that we get from these equivalence classes. And what we're going to do is we're going to prove these two theorems that we have written here. And that's going to show us that we really do get these distinct islands when we're working with these equivalence classes and equivalence relations. So the first theorem says if you have an equivalence relation R on a set A, then for any A and B in A, we get that the equivalence class of A is equal to the equivalence class of B if and only if A and B are related. So as long as they're related, they have the same equivalence class, and if they're not related, then they don't have the same equivalence class. So it can't have any sort of some are kind of related to each other, but not everything. Either they have exactly the same equivalence class, or they're just not related at all. The second theorem is going to rely on this definition that we have here, uh, this definition of uh, a partition. So a partition is just going to be a non-empty, a set of non-empty subsets of A. So it's the e union gives you all of A, and the intersection is empty. Right, so we can just sort of picture this as some big set A here. I'm just going to draw it as like a blob. And I'm going to split it up into a bunch of other little sets where they don't intersect at all. And when you union them, you get the whole set. So we're just splitting that up. So it says, the theorem that we're going to get says that if you have an equivalence relation, then if you look at all of those different equivalence classes here, then those are going to form a partition, right? So my equivalence classes don't overlap at all. And if you union them, you get the entire relation, right? So that's all of those different islands that we have floating around. So why don't we go ahead and actually prove each of these theorems? Okay, so the first theorem we want to show is that if you have an equivalence relation um, where you have A and B in the set A, then the equivalence class of A is equal to the equivalence class of B if and only if A is related to B. So let's go ahead and prove that. It's an if and only if, so I'm going to prove both directions. So let's start by assuming that the equivalence class of A is equal to the equivalence class of B. And I want to try to show that A is related to B. Remember that these equivalence classes are sets. So I can think about elements existing in those sets. So I'm trying to show that A is related to B. So if I can show that A is in B's equivalence class, then B's equivalence class ex contains all of the elements that are related to B. So if A is in that, then I conclude that A is related to B. So how do I get that A is in this set? Well, I know that if A is in this set and they're equal, then that would be good. So I can say I know that since R is an equivalence relation, it has to be symmetric, transitive, and reflexive. So in particular, it has to be reflexive. So A has to be related to itself. So A is in the equivalence class of A. And then since the equivalence class of A is equal to the equivalence class of B, we get that A must be in the equivalence class of B. And the only def way by the definition of the equivalence class of B that A could be in that is if A was related to B, because the equivalence class of B is all of the things that are related to B. Therefore, we have concluded RQ, so we're done. All right, so now going back the other way, I want to assume that A is related to B, and I want to try to show that the equivalence class of A is equal to the equivalence class of B. Again, we want to think about these as sets, so I'm going to write down what I want to show. And I have those in terms of sets, so I should think of that as a set equality. So to show that their sets are equal, I should take an arbitrary element in my first set, show it's in the second one. So I'm showing that subset, take an arbitrary thing in the second, show it's in the first, showing that subset, 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 we get our proof. Okay, so we can start with 
some element, which is in the equivalence class of A. What does it mean that it's in that? It means that C is related to A. And now I want to try to show that C is related to B. But I know that A is related to B by my assumption. So if C is related to A and A is related to B, then by transitivity, because R is a reflex is a equivalence relation, transitivity, I get that C is related to B. Thus, C has to be in the set of all things that are related to B. Great. So I know that the set equivalence class of A is a subset of the equivalence class of B. Now, let's let C, or you could choose a different letter, so a different letter, D, be in the equivalence class of B. So D is related to B, and A is related to B by the assumption. All right, but this one doesn't really allow us to chain it together because those letters sort of next to each other don't match. So let's actually, before we bring in that AB relation, let's actually switch this one around. So I can say that B is related to D. by symmetry, then since A is related to B, and we just got that B is related to D, we get that A is related to D by transitivity. And again, for the definition of equivalence class, I really need the D first. So D is related to A by symmetry. So that means that D is in the equivalence class of A. So we're able to show that if you have anything in B, it also must be in A. So I can go A to B, B to A. Thus overall, we get that the equivalence class of A is equal to the equivalence class of B. So I've shown both parts of that if and only if. Okay, so let's show the second theorem now, that if I have an equivalence relation on a set, then the set of equivalence classes form a partition of that set. So again, I've pulled in the definition of partition here. So we have that a partition is going to be a set of non-empty subsets, so they have to be non-empty, of A, such that the union equals all of A, and the intersection of any two different ones is the empty set. So it's a non-empty subset, the union is everything, the intersection is empty. So let's go ahead and see if we can prove that the set of equivalence classes forms that partition. So, We'll start with the non-empty subsets. So, oops, number one here. Let's show non-empty. So I'm thinking about this set of equivalence classes. So I need to find something that's in that equivalence class. So I know that A is in the equivalence class of A since a is related to A, right, because that reflexivity. So I know it's always in its own equivalence class. Therefore, each equivalence class is non-empty. So that's good. That's my first rule. Next, we want to show the union equals all of A. So I want to think about the union of all of these sets of A and A of the equivalence class of A, and I want to show that's equal to A. 
So let's think about what this is, right? So in order to show these two sets are equal, I probably want to show subset, subset. So if x is in this union, then x is in at least one of these for some a in a. But what does that mean? The set of a, that's just equal to, I'm going to use a different letter here, the set of y in a, such that y is related to a. So it can only be in this set if it's coming from a. That's part of that definition. Okay, so definitely if you're in the union, you're in a. Now, if you're in a, then again, we know that a is in its own equivalence class. So a is in that union of all of those equivalence classes. I probably shouldn't use a because that's kind of confusing because I already used that as my general guy. So let me go ahead and fix my letters here. So let's say I take some different letter, some B and A. Then B is going to be in its own equivalence class. So B is in the union over all elements in A because it was in A to start with. So it's going to be in the when it lands on itself. All right, so I certainly get everything in my set doing this. And now the last thing I just want to show is that I get the, the two, any two different subsets, their intersection is the empty set. So let's think about what we need to prove here, right? So we want to show if you have two different subsets, then their intersection is empty. So if A is not equal to B, so I have two different sets, then the intersection of those two sets is the empty set. So it's going to be sort of hard to assume what it looks like if those two subsets are not equal. So instead, let's use the contrapositive. So I'm going to assume that the intersection is not empty. And then what I want to show here is that those equivalence classes would then have to be equal to each other. So if they had overlap on anything at all, then they must actually overlap on every single thing and be equal to each other. So I assume I have some non-empty intersection. If it's non-empty, there must be something that's in it. So there must be some C that's in that intersection. But that means that C is in the equivalence class of A and C is in the equivalence class of B. So C is related to A and C is related to B. Now, what am I trying to do here, right? I'm trying to get the equivalence classes are equal. From my previous theorem, I know that I can show they're equal as long as I can show A is related to B. So can I get A and B here? Ah, well, I have a C in both of them. So as long as I can line them up correctly, then I can use transitivity to get that A is related to B. So by reflexivity, sorry, by symmetry, I get those confused sometimes. We get that A is related to C, and we'll, we already knew that C was related to B. So now the C's are sort of together in the middle. That's how I like to think about transitivity. So by that transitivity, A is related to B. Let's make that look more like an R. Thus, by the previous theorem, the equivalence class of A has to equal the equivalence class of B, which was the negation of what I wanted to show. So if those equivalence classes are not equal, their intersection must be empty, which is what we needed. As a final discussion question here, I want you to see if you can come up with the equivalence classes of the relation congruent mod 5 on the set Z. So think about what those equivalence classes are and how we could represent those.